I'd like to welcome back John, Managing Director of Crescent Managing. Um, obviously, this morning we saw a presentation of Teamwork Makes the Dream Work, which was absolutely fantastic. Um, if you've not seen it, obviously we've got the live stream, you know, definitely, you know, go on. It's worth, really worth a watch. And also I've put details in my LinkedIn as well. Um, what we're going to do today is a workshop this afternoon. So um, without further ado, I'm going to hand back over to John. John, thank you. Hello. Hi, everyone. And um, so as you, if you were here a moment ago, while we were just working through what approach we might want to take to this, um, I did, uh, as Rachel just kindly said, we did a presentation this morning. Um, I'll share my screen so that we can have a look at that, if you like. Uh, so the presentation was uh, entitled Teamwork Makes the Dream Work. And in that I don't really want to go through it again. Um, I'd really like, much rather like to take some questions and get some interaction from people. I'm not sure how that's exactly going to work, though. Um, but in essence, I was talking about uh, management and leadership skills that you might have had previously in a previous role. And now if you've moved into being a business owner, then what's the difference in terms of the application of those skills? What can you use that you had already? Um, and then what can you, what, what are your, your kind of key management and leadership strengths that you've got now? And, and what are your areas of development? So we looked at context. So just by way of a refresher, and then asked a couple of reflective questions. And this is where I'd like to get into the, the kind of workshop aspect of it really this afternoon, if anyone's interested. Um, so what skills have you brought forward and what do you need now? Uh, I ran through an idea around sort of management skills being sort of task related, leadership skills being more uh, relationship orientated and some of the needs for those. So we can talk about that as well. And again, uh, with this workshop in mind, there was a number of questions. So about your level of confidence in your skills, any sort of key strengths and development areas that you might have. Um, and then we took a look at what success might look like. So thinking about reflecting on the process that business owners have been through uh, during COVID. So that idea of um, very rapid and very uh, large scale change facing most business owners, thinking about what are the problems, how we explore potential solutions, um, and then assessing different options and then deciding which to take and which to throw our time and money and effort at really. So finish with the idea for this section that that requires a bit of courage. Um, and then again, some reflective questions, which I'd like to open up in this workshop session. So what does courage mean to you? Where do you get it? Where do you get support from people, other people? Uh, and where do you get challenged? So who is your critical friend and what might that mean to you? Um, and then the main premise of the talk was the idea that we can't do this alone. So we need support from people. So how do we create our winning team as a business owner? And I think creating your winning team draws on all of the skills, the management and leadership skills, are, are, you know, a perfect combination of those in order to have people who might be outside of your business that you need to engage in your business. So they may be a freelancer or a, another company or what have you that provide services and products and so on to you that you partner with or that they just kind of offer a little bit of help. Um, and we ran through a practical approach to, to building a winning team. And then I looked at the idea of doing a bit of a mind map. So networking your team. So who's, who should be involved for a particular project or ongoing or whatever. And personally for you, where are you getting your support from, from people like us or, or maybe elsewhere uh, to develop yourself and your skills and to maintain your focus and so on. Um, and then finally was this idea, which was a bit more management focused of thinking about a uh, communication plan. So something that's a bit more rigorous, it's a bit more planned. Um, it's something that we do quite a lot with business owners around um, strategic communication. So knowing who you're communicating with, uh, what method you're using. So communication method might be a, um, 
a, a wide range of applications these days, really. Um, and then when are you doing those uh, comms? Uh, so what's the sort of timing of that? And who's responsible for what? And even on a small a smaller piece of work, I think it's really important to have that stuff in place. Um, and and that was the that was the aim of it really. So the reflective questions that I'd like to go into, forgive me, just sort of whizzing back, um, are around your management and leadership skills. So uh, we could start with the questions that we had, which are. What skills do you think we need as a business owner? So I think as a business owner, you've got to have resilience. I think that is really important. I think resilience and it's also, I think you've got to give 100%. You know, I think with COVID, I've, I've spoken to so many people who have been, you know, employed in big entities and obviously with redundancies and what have you, they've completely changed their mindset in terms of actually, do you know what? Like I'm at risk, I want to be in control of like my own destiny. But I think it's, it's you've got to have that mindset, you've got to be proactive. I think for me, what I've seen a lot of is people, they really have that desire to make that leap of faith but there's like almost like that blocker that barrier sort of you know and I think it's obviously that worry you know when you're in you know working for a big company you've got your salary set every month you have your six pay you know I think it's almost that nervousness of oh my goodness you know it, it's a, a confidence thing I think massive confidence thing and the fear of the unknown I mean how do you how do you kind of get around that with people because I think for me that that's a massive massive thing thanks Rachel that's amazing I mean there's so much in what you've just said so I think personal resilience is exactly what we're what we're talking about here. I think so. The questions, the, the the kind of reflective questions that I'm asking you to consider for yourselves, really, those of you in the audience, um, is very much where do you what is that resilience and where do you get it and how do you overcome that kind of self doubt? So this is primarily a conversation aimed at business owners, people who are already in that situation of mm -hmm. oh my goodness I've got to make the decision so for me resilience comes from a number of areas really first of all I think you need to keep your purpose focused you need to be really really focused on what the purpose is and if if you connect with that purpose and that's still relevant today then you need to reconnect with that so let's say for example through COVID you run a bakery or a coffee shop or a cafe mm -hmm. like that and through COVID, all of your customers disappeared. Well, what was the purpose of you doing that? Why did you start running that, that, cafe, that cafe in the first place? Why did you run that business? And I think reconnecting with that purpose is really, really key. Um, I think the second thing that, again, I'm sort of getting at here that's a part of resilience for me is your support network. Yeah. So I'm talking about, and the main aim of this talk really is don't go it alone identify all the different people that can help you, different aspects of different people here, there and everywhere, um, and then ask for that help and, in, and, and invest your time and energy in, in helping others, I guess. But, but make sure that you can map out that development network or that support network for yourself. Um, and then I think the other area for me, and there are more, but the other area, big area for resilience for me is about uh, self-awareness and that kind of adaptability of thinking. I think what most people do when we're faced with, like, the, like you said, those barriers or the sort of challenges, what people do when they're faced with those is going to be unique to that individual and that situation. You know, do you, do you rise to the challenge or do you, does it freak you out and you feel overwhelmed or you feel anxious or you feel, you know, and actually what I'm saying is in the talk, if we slow that thought process down a little bit, and try and be a bit more logical and go, right, okay, let's just breathe a minute. What problem is this? What possible options are there? And how, what's that going to cost? And is it worth it? And so on, just, just slow it all down. So I think there is purpose, people, and then that sort of mindset of being able to slow things down and mm -hmm. have a little bit of confidence in your plan and what, what you're doing. And, but ultimately, you have to make that decision and then you have to ride through that uh, ambiguity, that, that sort of nervousness, really.
Yeah. John, can I ask something? I, I, yeah. I don't know whether this rates this. So do you work with many people? So I, I've also have a, an awful lot of people who yeah. are wanting to take that, that leap of faith, but obviously still need to provide an income for themselves and their family. So yeah. for a lot of the people I'm speaking with, they're still maybe working, you know, a, a part time okay. or a full time job with yeah. their business on the side. Do you come across many people like that? And how I, I'm, I just I struggle to kind of like, you know, see, you know, to try and find that balance and that commitment so they can obviously do the two you know is there anything anything you could offer any support any guidance of how to actually find that balance with a kind of you know a, a, almost like that transition from a, a full-time employment to a new business owner when they're juggling the two yeah of course yeah I mean so I I think the answer is be realistic and be mm -hmm. honest with yourself so I, I similar really I mean quite a lot of people just uh who are oftentimes when we're delivering a delivering a training program into an organization there's often you know some people in an audience there who actually do want to go it alone so quite often these conversations come up there for me um i think you need to have a really good plan i, I don't yeah. think you should leave your job if you have not got a business plan that you are really really uh, super motivated by but also that you can realistically deliver so treat it as a project and mm -hmm. work out what it's going to take to do it so if you think that if you think about well I'm just going to admit some people um, if you think about how much time and effort it might take and how much money it might take to set that business up then yeah. I think for people transitioning from employment to being self-employed you need to work out how long that's going to take and what roughly where you think the break-even point is going to be so if i'm going to need to do 10 hours a week so i'm going to keep my full-time job and then i'm going to do 10 hours a week maybe and that's going to be me developing my products and developing my branding and my website and my messaging and you know and working out who my customers customers are going to be and so on then how many of those 10 hours are you going to need? Because it sounds to me like that's probably going to take you a long time. So like yeah. any project, it's about balancing the, the money and the time that you have available. So certainly 16, 17 years ago, when I set up my first business, um, I, I worked part time and then I set my business up part time mm -hmm. and I just took a big hit in terms of my income. Yeah. So if you can afford to take the hit in your income, then great, then do it. If not, then carry on working full time and just work at it more slowly. Um, I wouldn't leave your job unless you are absolutely, uh, unless you, you feel super confident you've got a great plan. And we're happy to help people make those decisions, to be honest, and we can do that quite quickly. It's quite nice. When I said earlier in the presentation this morning, it's useful to have a critical friend um, yeah. I, mean, I mean, that's somebody who's going to challenge you and say, is that really going to work? Or how many of those are you going to sell? Or an example for me was fairly recently before COVID. So probably a couple of years ago now, actually, but feels recent. They wanted to set up a cupcake business. They wanted to sell cupcakes. And I said, and they were working in insurance at the moment, making quite good money. Um, and so we ran through, like I've just described, what a plan might be for what a cupcake business might look like. And it was two people who had this dream of leaving their job and doing that. And I think really it just became about like a planning exercise of working out how much they cost, how much is going to go into each one, what sort of resources you'd need to make however many cupcakes you would need to make whatever income. So it's a basic sort of, you know, cost and time and, and planning exercise. So I think that's my answer to that really is do loads of time and effort on getting a good plan. Don't write a 20 page business plan, write like a one or two page business plan, but do know that it's, it's very likely to work and get a critical friend to, to shoot as many holes in it as they can. It will give it more rigor then, and then you'll feel confident to get going. 
That's amazing. And, and apologies, John. I'm sorry, I'm asking so many questions, but oh, um, really <laughs> helpful. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. What about a startup business? So what about someone who has got this idea in their head? But you know, you say on obviously what skills did you have when you were employed? So you might have someone who's a subject matter expert in a particular area, which is brilliant within a company, but mm. they might not have the necessary skills, like you, you mentioned, you know, a project plan, things like that. You know, they might not have the first clue. I've got for example someone she's launching a product you know she's got her own business but launching hasn't got a clue how to go about it you know, do you are you able to assist with that at all at any guidance or you know anything like that for, for someone who is literally I've got this idea I've got this business that I want to do you know how do I get it going what skills what attributes do I need is that something that you are able to, to take and assist with at all yeah definitely yeah absolutely so I think management and leadership skills are not mm -hmm. really, you know, the, for the for the example that you've given, mm -hmm. um, I don't think you need to know a huge amount more than you know already, but you might need to know a bit more. So we offer we offer a lot of qualifications for people who are working through developing their career in a particular direction. Mm -hmm. um, but equally, we offer short courses and just a little bit of help, you know, an hour or two here and there. I think I could probably, going with the example, I reckon mm -hmm. I could probably give that individual, any person, everything they need to know about project management for now, probably in a couple of hours. You know, it doesn't need to be long-winded and it doesn't yeah. need to be difficult. I think sometimes you could go and sit on three or four different courses. I've done it myself. I do it all the time. <laughs> I go on this course or that course and I get something from it. But it's not focused on me and what my gaps are and what I need and what products I want to take to market and so on. So I think sometimes it can help just to sort of get a, a focused version of it. Um, so project managing is, is natural for me because that's what I used to do as a job uh, and program management too. So I've been responsible for yeah. literally hundreds of projects at any one time sometimes. Um, but actually to other people, it's not. So you might be a brilliant engineer or like my brother, a brilliant woodworker, you know, he makes these yeah. fantastic things, but he's not interested in websites and he's not interested in projects, but you need those skills in order to be able to deliver this. So yeah, we can help people to develop the skills that they need quickly and, and no. fairly painlessly. Absolutely. It just really, it really resonates with me because um my background was in finance um, and then I actually I moved from being a relationship manager for many years into project management and honestly it was like a foreign language to me you know things like project plans and you know project initiation documents things like that so what I'm thinking for someone who's never been in that world as you quite rightly said it can be really you know overwhelming and you know someone you know, someone says to you right you need a business plan you need a project plan it's not they will sit there and think well, what, what is that so it's great that you've actually got this simplification of what yeah. that actually is because I think you know we're, we're gosh it can be so over complicated and such a complex task and in actual fact you know as you say one you know by just doing a course and knowing exactly what your steps are it's actually very very straightforward it's just kind of yeah. pinning down to what those priorities are what those needs and, and getting order in in place can yeah. i just ask in terms of you know your sort of your client base not going too much detail what is the biggest challenge that your business owners face what would you say is that that you know the majority of people that come to you the, the biggest challenges that they have um that's a really interesting question it really depends on the size of the business but if mm -hmm. i focus on small and medium sized businesses i think there's two key challenges really um, for very small micro businesses, people just setting up on their own as one or two or three people, maybe. Um, I think typically the problem is getting started and getting a little bit of traction in the market. And uh, essentially, if I could boil it down, I would say that their problem is they haven't got enough customers. Most, most small businesses haven't got enough customers. And that's the problem to solve. The other more medium sized, I would say, business problem that we deal with is owner managers that get to usually around the size of about 30, 30 to 40 people mm -hmm. in their business and they can't manage it anymore and they can't let go. You know, they've spent five years or 35 years uh, building the business to the point it's at now. They're earning a few million quid a year. They want it to grow or it has the potential to grow and they have no idea how to do that. 
Um, so it's either getting started or growing beyond a certain point, I would say. So I think those are the two challenges. If you take the, if you take the first one, not enough customers, sadly, that is quite a complicated problem to solve. And I think mm-hmm. most, most people, such as myself, who've run several businesses and done well with some and really terribly with others, uh, learn those sorts of skills. And I think you said earlier, uh, Rachel, about mindset. And I think a lot of it is mindset. Um, and I don't mean that you need to be tough or you need to be this or that. Don't need to be typecast. You know, like we don't have to put kind of labels on it. You don't have to have a particular type of personality. You just need to know for you what is going to get you through that sort of, you know, that stage. And I'm suggesting that we can take like a skills based approach to it. We don't need to overthink it and we can just make it a bit more logical and a bit more sort of doable really it doesn't we can i think again as you suggest you alluded to we can demystify it a bit Mm -hmm. there's nothing scary about projects there's nothing scary about finance there's nothing scary about marketing but if you don't know anything about any of them they do look pretty big and like what on earth is going on (laughs) you know if you've never worked in a marketing department before you no idea how to do any of that well that's okay Let's break it down. Let's slow it down and let's do it as some kind of learning process. So similar with, yeah, so most of our programs cover, uh, no, our programs cover most of those kind of key areas really for small and medium sized businesses. Mm -hmm. But again, it's whatever individuals want really. Absolutely. And I think also with COVID as well, obviously the way we do business, it's, it's, it's completely changed. You know, as I say, people are learned, you know, have to adapt. They have to, to, to be able to move forward. Yeah. Have you noticed with your client base, you know, because it's really bizarre that people I've spoken to thinking that, you know, for a lot of businesses, and I'm talking your big, your big entities, you know, it's, it's been quite a hit for them. But in terms of small business owners that do most of their stuff, you know, through websites and online, actually, it's been a real positive because people are like, you know, gosh, we've got Zoom, you know, we've got FaceTime, we've got Microsoft Teams, you know, I can reach out to anyone in the world. And it's opened up so many opportunities. Have you found the same, you know, with COVID? Has it had a hit on people? You know, have people struggled to change their mindset um that's a really interesting question i would say i'm going to maybe divide people into two Mm -hmm. and i think certainly just thinking about some people that i know and some people that i've worked with for many years and i think there's a bit of a sort of 50 50 split going on i think Mm -hmm. there's the people who've become overwhelmed by what you've just described um it's too much they haven't been able to adapt or they've adapted more slowly um, and I still know some people who are in that boat. You know, I, I don't think they're going to go back to what they were doing before. They've, mm-hmm. they've kind of done with it. Um, and then there are other people who, in actual fact, have surprised themselves and really embraced it and thought, OK, so we were a cafe and now we're not a cafe because the door's locked shut. But what have we got that we can use to make a few pounds? You know, how, how do we make a few a few quid from whatever it is we've got. And that's not easy. You know, that does require creative thinking and it requires creative thinking in the moment, which, you know, like we've got, we need to sort this out now, not next week or whenever. So that's quite high pressure uh, scenario to, mm-hmm. to find yourself then needing to have to sort of adapt and change and what have you. So I'm going to say there's the people who did and the people who didn't. Absolutely. Do you think you can still be a good business owner if you've got the all necessary, I say, skill set in terms of technical skills? Yeah. But with that, so the, I think what I'm trying to say is, so there might be like what you've just said. Then you're very much sort of saying that you know you, there needs to be a solution, mm. but some we do, not everyone can see that solution. Can you still be a good business owner if you have got the skill set but maybe can't find those solutions, or are you going to sink? <laughs> Yeah, I think I think that's where that's where teamwork comes in. I think that's where you need. So I can go into my little brother is a a joiner. He makes uh, things out of wood and furniture, but also, you know, kind of small things and gifts and bowls and very, very lovely pens and all sorts of things. I can 
I think it's easier when you've got that objectivity. I can go into his workshop and I can go, are you selling these? Well, no, not really. They're not selling very well at the moment. Well, what could you, you know, like I can see what he can do instead. And because we've got that relationship, I can, you know, we can have that conversation and I could say, well, why don't you do this? Or why don't you do that? Or what about this? Or I noticed that people are buying this or I saw this in a magazine. So I think sometimes the inspiration and that intention to help and support and be, again, like I've said a few times, that kind of critical friend, as it were, where you come in and say, well, I don't think anyone's buying that. Like that's old fashioned now, or that's not the current style for that type of thing. Or that I'm not being mean, I'm trying to be giving feedback and be realistic so that he can adapt and change and make something new. And usually, and certainly in my experience in large organizations and in small ones, innovation is, doesn't need to be some enormous innovation. It just needs to be an incremental change. Take what you've got, make something different with it. Turn it upside down, make it inside out, make it bigger, make it smaller. Don't think that it has to be a whole new business or a whole new set of products or services or whatever. I don't think it does. Just tweak it and then see if people want to buy it now. If it's not selling on Etsy, then sell it on eBay. Or if it's not, you know, like just, just play around with the costs or play, play around with the, the, the market or the audience or the channels mm -hmm. that you're using to reach people. So the innovation could be in the product or service. It could be in the channels. It could be in a slightly, you know, slightly different niche. And so, yeah, I would say, uh, I would say get, get some feedback, get some help. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, I couldn't agree with that more. You know, I'd like to think I'm a really practical, factual person, but sometimes when you're so involved in something, yeah, you yeah. almost get this tunnel vision, don't you? And yeah, there could be a yeah. really simple solution, but because you're almost so invested and you're literally focusing on your, and, and even over analyzing something, it can just take someone, literally an outsider, just someone to work alongside you, whether they're your mentor, your trainer, your coach, whatever they are, a friend that's mm. brought to just say, oh, well, actually, have you thought, thought about that? And I think, yeah, you're absolutely right. Having that support around you, I think, is absolutely key. And it's yeah. about bouncing ideas off, again, you know, off someone and saying, what do you think about this? You know, if I was to suggest this to you, you know, would you be of interest? So I think, no, absolutely right. I think teamwork is very, very important. Yeah. And I think you just, based on what you said, I think you just need to try it as well. So the couple of things in what you said, well, loads, actually. <laughs> One is... If your personality is such that you like the detail, and that's probably most business owners that have been going for a little while, because you're so focused on your own little world that you do, and you need to be, but you need to kind of come up and out and look at look a bit more of a bigger picture of it. So helicopter view or whatever you want to call it. Um, and sometimes you need somebody to help you with that change of perspective. So I totally agree. And if your personality is such that you particularly like detail and maybe your job is quite detailed it might be software engineering or joinery or you know i don't know whatever on earth it is if you're particularly orientated or preferring to do detail then you'll probably really benefit from somebody coming along and you might not like the advice you don't want to hear it that's the courage that i mentioned earlier in the, the conversation which is i think you need a lot of courage to go yeah, I'll probably stop selling them now and I might sell something ever so slightly different or I'll make something new or I'll paint it. And I never wanted to paint. It. You know, like whatever it is, you might need to just be brave and work out what people want to buy now. So and then the other thing I would say is don't spend forever on this create creativity bit. Just make a bit of it, get some feedback, make a bit of a change and then do it. You know, at risk of sounding like a kind of sportswear advert, do it. Just, just try one or try you know we're going to do this for a few days we'll do that for a few days it won't come from you sitting there thinking a load of stuff think it do it think it do it think it you know like you must keep keep testing keep testing the market with new things absolutely and i'm gonna go out there now and just come out with a negative how yeah. do you help people deal with setback because let's be honest there's going to be so much setback that people are going to you know it would be silly if we lied and said you know what my business is going to be great and it's going to be rosy from start to finish you know yeah. people are going to have to deal with setback obviously we've mentioned resilience but what support do you give people how do you kind of turn that around and, and you know literally assist people and you know to deal with those that those negativity those pushbacks because they're, they're going to happen aren't they they're going to happen yeah sure so if 
if I think my take on this is if you set the plan, if it's mm -hmm. your plan and your intention to succeed in, in selling whatever product or service and you're faced with setbacks, then I think to some degree you create the setbacks. We need to try and take as much ownership as we can reasonably. I can't control a pandemic. You know, none of us mm -hmm. saw that coming. But actually, we can control our response to it. So I think, again, I would say we need to slow down the thinking. And, and again, with the courage, which is maybe you do need to stop. You know, maybe it's, it's, it's an insurmountable barrier. Maybe it's too much. Um, mm -hmm. I think people have to think about, I'm a great advocate of people, uh, like of, of sort of being holistic with your approach to things. A lot of other business people really are not. They'll think that's silly. But I think if it's likely to cost you your health or your relationships or, yeah. you know, or whatever, then, then I think actually maybe it's better that we do stop doing that and we go and mm -hmm. get a job. A friend of mine is a, an actor. He's a very good actor. and He's been in lots of things. Um, and I don't know that many people know that he works in Sainsbury's, a supermarket, on night shift. All the time he's not being flown around the world doing acting. And that is unbelievable. That, that for me, really, really humbles me. It really grounds me. And he doesn't know how inspirational he is. I've told him. But in actual fact, he said, look, I'm not proud and I don't mind. And, and this is what I do when I'm just being the normal me. Yeah. And then I go and earn lots of money occasionally, maybe once or twice a year, maybe 10 times a year. He goes and earns money. But in the meantime, he can't bear to be doing nothing. Yeah. So I think sometimes we need to just find those inspirational people and they won't be. You can choose, you know, iconic people if you like. But maybe it's more about the, look closer to home and, and just look for smaller sources of inspiration. So barriers, I would say, look after yourself, think holistically yep. if that resonates. Um, and then again, I'm going to say the same thing, which is to what degree have you got control over it? I mm -hmm. think if you and I can control whatever a bit of it we can control, like what can you do differently or what can I do today? What's the smallest thing that will make the biggest amount of difference to this particular problem and just work through it steadily? We all get setbacks. And I know that people, colleagues of mine, colleagues of mine who are speaking at your event, mm -hmm. um, will say that actually it's really important to be able to take as much control as possible and ownership. Um, so my phrase with that is dogged pursuit and knowing when to stop. Absolutely, very wise words, very wise words. In terms of if we sort of turn it back to yourself and your business and yeah. the support you provide people, what yeah. is your recommendation in terms of sessions, like amount of time that you spend with people, frequency? Could I find yeah. out a little bit more about that? That would be, be yeah, really good. Sure, yeah. So we have... There's three parts to our business. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll get this three, but there's three parts to our business. One is distance learning courses and qualifications. Mm -hmm. The other is working with small businesses. So this is the answer, direct answer to your question. Yeah. Um, and then the other one is working with large companies on bespoke kind of culture change and leadership programs and so on. So we do the very big programs. We do very precise kind of specific stuff for business owners and also for healthcare weirdly um well not weirdly but anyway another story um and then the distance learning so they're the kind of key areas of our business so to answer your question directly if you've got a business that there's a few of you that need a leadership program then we can spend a little bit of time and work out how you might want to learn that and that's at the bigger end of things for the people in the middle, the small businesses and the micro businesses and the, I guess some medium sized businesses, then we tailor our support. So we have courses that you might find useful. We're trying to set our course. Our courses are positioned differently to what certainly in the UK you can quite often get for free from the local government. So local enterprise partnerships and so on. Our stuff's a bit more expensive than that, but it will be a lot more focused and it will be a lot more effective. I don't wish to badmouth anyone else's training because mm -hmm. they're, they're really useful courses, but they're kind of introductory, whereas ours is much more focused on you and what you're going to do. So I would say for a little bit of support 
before you take the plunge and become a business, for example, so pre pre kind of uh, going into business, then I would say probably like a few hours, two or three hours maximum, you know, that, that let's just do a little bit and see, see what kind of works for you. There's a bit of an investment there. It might be a few hundred quid, but actually that will save you. I promise you it will mm -hmm. save you a lot of hassle and a lot of kind of pain further down the right the road. If you're in the first sort of six months to kind of 18 months really of your business and you want it to go a bit quicker, then again, I think we could do a little skills sort of review. Uh, we could think about what you've got, who you need, where you're going right and where you're going wrong. That's just a few hours as well initially. And then maybe a little bit of support kind of an hour on and off here and there. So we don't tie people into to that sort of stuff. It's as much or as little as you need. Um, and then we can help you find the right people and so on as well. Um, and then I think beyond that, if you're a company that's looking to grow and expand, um, so like I said, where your business is probably doing quite well or very well, and you need to expand quickly, then we can certainly help you with the skills and the people and the management and leadership development aspects and the organizational development. So what structure should we have and what systems and processes do we need? So uh, organizational development, which is part of my um, senior management kind of background, really. So it's it runs to single like a few hours is mm -hmm. the short answer. I don't think it needs to be really heavy, to be honest. Um, and we don't tie people into that sort of stuff, you know, have as much as or as little as you need. And I think also if we're not right for you, then then go with somebody else. I think there's always so many different services and individuals and styles and that. Find someone, like I said in the presentation, find somebody that, that you like, find somebody that you can build trust and build a relationship with. We have really, really high levels of repeat business um, from people. We have relationships with people that have been customers for 10 years or more. Um, and we really value that because we're not going to sell them more than they need and we're not going to be anything other than kind of honest and, and authentic with them. So, yeah, find somebody that works for you uh, style wise and, and resource wise. If you can't afford a thousand pounds for business support or a little bit of a critical friend, then find somebody who can do it for 200. They're out there. It's fine. Yeah. No, absolutely. I think trust and I think it's so important to gel with that person. You know, if you've not got that rapport, yeah. it's it's game over, isn't it, before it started. Yeah. And I'm so sorry, I'm taking up loads of time, but I'm gonna I'm gonna close it with one final question. And it's yeah. it, apologies if, if this has been this has been mentioned. But in terms of obviously you mentioned a lot about you know business owners, what about large businesses where within that business you've got people managing teams? So in effect, that is their business, you know, your team leaders. Do you work with people like that? So, you know, would you be would you be willing to work with a big organization who has, you know, a number of different business areas yeah. that maybe are struggling with their management and leadership skills? Would that be something you would look at? Yeah, it is. And that's the majority, honestly, with that's the majority of our work. So most Brilliant. of our in company programs are either around, so there's a number of headings. And they, we tend to focus on what are the most recent directions of travel that people want to go into. So we do definitely do team leader, middle manager and senior manager and executive development programs mm -hmm. with or without accreditation. Um, that is usually pretty much tailored to the business. But again, it's a fairly sort of affordable price. It's not super duper. We're not at the expensive end. Um, we're not at the cheap end either. Um, and we also do uh, culture change uh, programs for large organizations as well. So culture change, the, the trends that we're tending to work with at the moment are around mental health and well-being and in, in improving. Fantastic. Teams. Um, we're doing diversity and inclusion is a really yeah. big deal. And we're doing a lot of work. And again, that's with or without qualifications. So, and I'm, I'm a pragmatist. I want to know that your people are going to be like genuinely are going to feel more included at work or they're going to feel well because well people and included people are also more productive you know they yeah. want to be there absolutely what, that for me for us is not just about training that has to be about like a ground up you know what what 
skills and tools and techniques and what thinking do those team members need so it's not just a kind of sheep dip training course we're not interested in that no. i know we're, i know we're a training company but when it comes to culture change culture change is culture change and and that's what i've done as a as a profession for many many years so mental health diversity and inclusion um, also sustainability leadership we we've got a new program on that which is increasingly popular uh, and we also help people around their customer experience and customer service as well to trying to accelerate that and then the main that's all the kind of fun stuff but the main stuff we do is around improving performance so uh, yeah just developing people improving performance um at, at a team level for team leaders middle managers you name it really and we've worked with enormous companies you know global proper global yeah. big global companies and we've worked with smaller ones too so we've worked with in manufacturing in software development in uh oof, you name it really healthcare a lot local <laughs> government regional government stuff and um, you name it like pretty much pretty much all the the sectors now no, that's absolutely amazing. And certainly for us with Finders on Web, obviously we've got a number of companies that um, Santosh runs as well. We would be very, very interested. Um, so I'll be definitely connecting with you afterwards. And I just, I have to say that the health and wellbeing um, side as well, absolutely brilliant to hear because you know what, you've hit the nail on the head. You know, we have gone through, we are going through pandemic. People, you know, you know, you forget there's people who literally are single people who literally live on their own, maybe in a one bedroom flat. The repercussion of them not being in an office with yeah. people, having that interaction yeah. is huge. Yeah. And you know, people forget that actually in these big organizations, if you want to drive performance, you know, if someone's mental health and someone's motivation is not there, you have lost that right from the, the offset. So in actual fact, health and well-being is probably a primary and key factor into actually driving and increasing performance. And I think for me, if, you know, for, I'm very lucky to have worked for the people that I do, you know, they are, you know, very, very family orientated. We are like a community. And, you know, for me, you know, there's none of this, you know, God, I used to panic if I phoned in sick and think, oh my God, what are the repercussions? You know, there's none of that you know health comes first well-being comes first if you can't do something there's always someone to step in because their view is is do you know what health is first and you know what if you are healthy you've got healthy mindset you know you're you're in a good place mentally you are going to be and perform well and not only that it's almost the reverse psychology you know for me if someone gives me 100 percent, i'll give back 200 yeah yeah and i think thank you for that and i, I I think it needs to be not tokenistic. I think, and I'm not going to get into the detail of it now. I'm mm. sure, you know, I don't want to take up too much, too much of people's time, but with, I, I completely agree with what you've said. I feel like we've barely started. I think yeah. businesses large and small are really going to need to refocus on this. And so we like to focus on the modern trends in management and leadership, which are mental health and well-being and inclusive, inclusive leadership and sustainable, you know, they're all the key things that are gonna keep us all quite focused for quite a number of years to come. But mental health at the moment, I have a, a clinical medical background myself. And so I know a lot of people and, and we've designed from the ground up our mental health and wellbeing stuff, resources for teams and, you know, things that we think can make a real difference. But we've designed them with people, not just kind of sat in a room on our own, but we've co-produced yeah. to make sure that it's right and I think the difference, just a really quick key point with mental yeah. health and well-being at work, the difference is if I've got, if I'm physically unwell, I'll probably take the time off, you know, I'll go, I'll be off sick, I break my leg or something terrible, then I have to sit on the sofa for six weeks or something. With mental health stuff, you don't, you're in work probably, you might be better off in work than not in work, but that comes then with some sense that we need to understand each other better and we need to understand how to support each other rather than you know causing conflict or whatever how can we how can we be in work you know it's not always about taking time off sick as it were because you might not be sick in, in that sort of sense absolutely so, so there is there's 
you've got to get into the detail of it a little bit more and we have and i'm super passionate about it um, and they are modern trends in management that that really motivate us and that's what our purpose for for kind of doing what we do is really is to make a positive difference to people Oh, do you know, it's so, uh, uh, that's absolutely amazing hearing that because, you know, one of my things that I, I actually love to hear from anyone is um, people who like to make a difference. I think that that's, you know, we need like that meaning, you know, something, you know, like to make a difference is, is absolutely everything. And, you know, I think, you know, even if I look at sales, for me, you know, when I was in a sales role, it wasn't about the amount of commission I earned. It, my, my day would be more important. If someone just said, thank you so much, you've really helped me today, that would be absolutely everything for me. That would be everything. And I think, you know, as humans, and especially what we're going through at the moment, to have that, that connection to literally, to know that you're making a difference and helping someone, I think you, you, that's priceless, absolutely priceless. And sometimes, like you've just said, it's the smallest things. Absolutely. You know, it's just that little kind of, you're right. You know, like just just, just checking in with somebody. Yeah. You know, I don't necessarily need to know the life story or anything like that, but actually just a bit of empathy in the right place yeah. can make a, a huge positive difference to somebody's day. And I think sometimes the, it's the subtler, simpler things that actually can make the difference. And by the way, none of that is at the expense of the performance of the business. I still want the business to be totally successful. Otherwise, what's the point in doing it? So, you know, it's two sides of the same coin. We want to be productive and we want to be well. Absolutely. Well, John, it's been an absolute pleasure. I've thoroughly enjoyed this session and I actually, I can't thank you enough. I am um, the information. Um, it's brilliant. As I say, I'll be in touch, um, of course, after this call anyway, um, and we'll definitely schedule a meeting the next week. But um, for anyone who is watching, um, please do get in touch. Um, it just absolutely health, well-being, the coach, the training, the guidance that, that John can give you, I, I think is just so beneficial. And I think especially with everything that's going on in the world at the moment, I think you, we all need to join in our lives. We definitely do. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And thank you so much for taking the time. And thank you so much for your, your interesting questions. It's been an absolute pleasure. Oh, John, thank you so much. And no, thank you. Thank you. And uh, enjoy the rest of your day. And we'll definitely be in touch soon. <laughs> Likewise. Thank you. And thanks to all for watching. Thanks.